Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to revisit some of my past five star reads to see if I would still rate them five stars today. So if you've been with my channel for any length of time, you will know that my reading tastes have definitely changed, even just as recently as within the past couple of years since restarting my booktube channel. And just, I feel like I'm overall a lot more confident in my tastes as a reader, and I'm much more able to accurately predict books that are going to work for me versus books that will not work for me. And to that end, I'm now also far more selective about the books that I bring into my home. So I was scrolling through Goodreads the other day, and I saw some books that I rated five stars, and I questioned myself on that five star rating. Now, of course, reading Rating five stars is completely subjective and a lot of the times when you're rating a book five stars it comes off the immediate high of finishing the book and so after time has passed and you're rethinking about it you're like maybe it wasn't such a five stars. Time has a way of changing perspectives on absolutely everything and so you can't really rate a book based on how you think you're going to feel about it in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years, right? So I completely acknowledge that going back through my five star reads is not necessarily accurate about how I felt back in the moment when I was reading those stories and that's completely fine but I'm going to kind of review these as how I am as a reader now compared to when I rated these five stars. Now there's going to be a couple of caveats here to this video. First of all, I've been on Goodreads since 2012 and I haven't necessarily been seriously logging the books that I've read since 2012. Only since maybe about 2017 I would say I got really serious about logging but I don't really want to include any books prior to 2017 just because first of all I don't want this video to take five million years and also I really just know that who I was as a reader in 2012 is nowhere near where I am am as a reader today. And also the books that I read in 2012, I'm not really going to be able to accurately express my thoughts and feelings on those books, if that makes sense. So for the purpose of this video, I really only want to focus on books that I read maybe within the last four or five years, maybe even six years or so. I'm not going too terribly far back in time, but we're just going to kind of quickly run through some of the books that I've given five stars and see if I still feel that way about them. We will of course also include books that I did give five stars this year already to see if maybe I've already changed my mind on them. Now Goodreads, of course, is not the most functional website and well I do have the ability to sort by rating so I can see all of my five stars in one go. I don't have the ability to sort by rating and date read. At least I don't think that I do. So all of these five stars are not listed chronologically so I'm just gonna like go through and talk about some of them and I'll skip the ones that are super old or anything like that. All right so let me go ahead and pull up the screen recording here. All right and the very first one that I have is Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson which I read for the first time last year in 2023. It's been just over a year now and that book blew me away. It's a chunky book y'all. It's over a thousand pages. It's definitely tedious and slow going. So I was really worried about how I was going to get along with it. But by the end of that book, I just kind of wanted to be back in the world with those characters. Now, am I still intimidated to continue in that series? Absolutely. But would I still give it a five stars today? I think so. I really do. Just because of the journey that book took me on. It was kind of like a study session. I studied really hard for that book. And I just remember the overall experience of reading it. When a book can give you an experience, I think it is absolutely worth the five stars. Next, we have Ready Player One, which is probably the most recent five stars that I gave. I read it back in April and it blew me away. I was not expecting to love that book nearly as much as I did considering it is now over 10 years old and I'm very very late to the game on that one. I loved it. I still think about it and I would absolutely still give this a five stars. Okay skipping over the fault in our stars me before you. Emmy and Oliver. I read that back in 2020 and I just remember loving it. I remember stating that it was one of my new favorite young adult contemporaries of all time. Would I still give it a five stars today? Probably not but I don't really feel like that's fair because back in 2020 when I read this I was a young adult reader and I'm no longer a young adult reader. I honestly don't remember too terribly much about the story except that it follows a young boy who was kidnapped by his father when he was very young and after I don't know maybe like 10 years he's returning and that includes rebuilding relationship with Emmy who was his best friend at the time and I just remember really enjoying what Robin Benway did with the story. I thought there were some great harder hitting elements there so I think that if I were to go back and read it today my rating would still be very high. I think it would probably still be like a four star rating. I don't don't necessarily know if I would give it a five stars but again that's not necessarily fair because I'm no longer a YA reader especially no longer a YA contemporary reader. Um, okay we're gonna skip slammed because that's a little bit too old. The storyteller. I will go ahead and talk about the storyteller even though it's kind of like on the cusp of the timeline and that's just because it's one of my favorite historical fictions of all time. I gave it an easy five stars. Would I give it a five stars today? I don't know probably. One of the main reasons I gave that book a five stars was because there was a twist in there that really just broke my heart. I did not see it coming and it made me an emotional mess and I 
still think about that twist to this day. So I am pretty confident in my rating of five stars with this one. So I'm good with that. Uh, the Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand, another young adult read that was read many, many years ago. But I will tell you that this was a beautiful, hard hitting young adult contemporary that features a boy who committed suicide and Cynthia Hand based that on her own experience with her brother. I remember that being a wonderfully hard hitting YA. And so even though I don't necessarily remember all the details of that story, I am fine sticking with my five star rating on that. And then of course we have a bunch of Sarah J Maas. We have A Court of Mist and Fury. We have Empire of Storms, Kingdom of Ash, Queen of Shadows. I will admit that a lot of my five star ratings for these books are not necessarily even based upon my overall enjoyment of the plot, but just my love of the world and the characters. But I really do think that all of these five stars stand, especially Kingdom of Ash. I mean, I just read that in February, I believe it was. So I just finished that series. I absolutely love Sarah J Maas's stories and the world that she builds and the characters, the friendship groups and all of that stuff. So I am confident in leaving these at five stars. Every last word we're going to go ahead and skip over because that's a little bit too old. The Nightingale, 100% a five star historical fiction. No question, one of the best World War II historical fictions that exists today, in my opinion. Crooked Kingdom, which of course is the second book in the Six of Crows duology. I don't necessarily know if I would give that five stars today. It would probably be like a four or 4.5 stars. I did absolutely love the duology, but this is another one that I was just like really up in the hype of the story and the characters. Now, also, I should give a caveat here that some of these books I might have rated like a 4.5, but because Goodreads is still stupid and still does not allow you to do half star ratings, some of these might not be like quite so accurate, but I'm just going based on what the rating I see in front of me is. Um, God's Grave and Dark Dawn are 100% still five stars. I finished Dark Dawn last year and that book broke me. Um, I was sobbing at my desk at work. Uh, I love the series so much. It is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. I cannot recommend this series enough. So yeah, that will be five stars. And speaking of J. Kristoff, Gemina, the second book in the Illuminae Files series, I would absolutely, absolutely still give that five stars. That is my favorite book in the Illuminae Files. The Illuminae Files is probably one of the best reading experiences I've ever had in my entire life because of all the mixed media. It was so much fun. It was so amazing. And I wouldn't mind revisiting those stories with the audiobooks. I think that would make it an even more incredible experience. Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the book that introduced me to Bridget Kemmerer. This is another very hard hitting YA contemporary. And I'm going to go ahead and be confident in my five star rating on this one because I just remember this one hit me right in the feels. There's also a You've Got Mail trope in there, which I absolutely love. There was a lot of talk about grief and stuff in this as well. So yes, I'm confident in my five stars. And of course, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I don't even need to say anything about this one, y'all. Five stars, one of my favorite books of all time. I will never change my rating on that one. House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Bass. Yes, I am also going to stick with my five star rating on this one. I didn't love House of Sky and Breath nearly as much as House of Earth and Blood, but House of Earth and Blood, I do believe deserves the five star rating. One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think this is one that I didn't give five stars. I think this was probably closer to like a 4.5, but you know, that's fine. I will go ahead and stick with this one because I really loved the concept of this one. This was probably the most unique take on a love triangle I've ever experienced. And it really explored grief very well and how the fact that when you grieve, it changes you as a person. So who you are before you lost a person is not who you are going to be after you've lost that person. And I just love the exploration. Taylor Jenkins Reid is just a phenomenal author in my opinion. She very rarely does wrong. And so I'm confident in this one. Bad Romance is another young adult contemporary. And this deals with toxic relationships and domestic abuse, like a very young relationship, but you could definitely see the awfulness that was happening to our female main character in here. And I thought Heather Demetrios did a wonderful job of portraying that relationship and kind of giving people who are reading the books warning signs on what to watch out for. So I am going to stick with the five stars. Again, this is another situation. If I read it today, would I be affected the same? I don't know, possibly not. But based on how I felt at the time that I read that story, I would keep it as a five stars. And I would absolutely keep Summer of Salt at a five stars. That is one of my favorite young adult contemporaries to date, even though I didn't like anything else by Katrina Leno that I read afterwards. This is a solid YA contemporary. The vibes are immaculate. Witchy vibes, magical on an island, phenomenal. If you have not read this and you still enjoy YA contemporaries, you absolutely need to read this. White Light, no, I definitely would not give that a five stars. It was a cute contemporary holiday romance. And yeah, I know today that if I read that, I would not feel the same. Same thing with the names they gave us. But again, these were just on the cusp of that timeline. Like these were read back in 2018. Very, very different reader. The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. I am pretty confident that I would still give that five stars. It is one of my favorite Karen Slaughters of all time. And The Great Alone is still to this day my favorite Kristen Hanna of all time. So I would absolutely give that a five stars. I don't necessarily know if The Women, which I did read earlier this year and was one of the easiest five stars I ever gave, would beat it out just because of the atmosphere of The Great Alone. It was so incredibly harrowing and raw. And I don't know if anything could ever really top that, but The Great Alone is easy, five stars. And same thing with My Dear Hamilton. I mentioned that book in almost every single video. I'm not going to talk about it here, but y'all know how I feel about it. Still a five stars. The Kiss Quotient. Um, again, 
again, another one that's really on the cusp of the time frame that we're talking about, but I do remember really enjoying it. It probably would not be a five stars today. It probably would be like closer to a four star, but I think Helen Huang did a very good job with the story. There was a lot of really great autistic representation in here. I absolutely love the male love interest and how careful he was with our main character, Stella. I absolutely really disliked the other books in this series. So I don't know if this was just like a one-off with Helen Huang for me, but I don't necessarily think I would give it a five stars today, but certainly a four, 4.5 stars. The Simple Wild, 100% five stars. That is still one of my favorite contemporary romances of all time. I absolutely love it. I shout its praises constantly. I will never go back on that. Regretting You and Reminders of Him are still to this day two of my favorite Colleen Hoovers of all time. And those are the ones that I recommend the most frequently when I'm talking about Colleen Hoover. And so they definitely, in my opinion, deserve the five stars. The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I tore through that book in 24 hours and I will stick with a five star rating just because of how immersed I was in that book. None of the other Simone St. James books that I read has hit as hard as the Sundown Motel for me. I still do think that I would give this one a five star just because of how atmospheric it was and how engaging and enthralling it was. Wild at Heart was a novella in the Simple Wild series and I just absolutely adored it. I'm not a novella person and I completely admit that the reason I gave this five stars was just because of how much I absolutely love the characters in the world but this was just the perfect heartwarming novella that you want during the Christmas season and that's when this was set was during the Christmas season and I just remember getting teary a couple of times just because of all the things that were happening with the characters and I'm just smiling thinking about it because I love these characters so so much so I think I would give it a five stars. One to watch I actually just talked about this in my underrated books video so yes I think I would still give it a five stars if for no other reason than the conversations that this book opened up about body positivity and body shaming and what plus size people have to go through when they're in the public eye and even not in the public eye just existing in the world so yes. The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna I do have it as a five star here it's probably closer to a four stars this wasn't my favorite Kristen Hanna but in pure Kristen Hanna fashion it was harrowing it was raw it was real the characters go through a lot of stuff in this story but it didn't necessarily emotionally grip me like The Great Alone like The Women like The Nightingale but I will definitely keep it at the rating. Oh my bad I was talking about Wild at Heart like it was forever wild but either way they're both part of the Simple Wild series. Wild at Heart was actually book two in the series and again yeah I would easily keep it at five stars. What I really loved about Wild at Heart that I'll just touch upon really quickly it focuses on the relationship after the honeymoon period is over and that's not really something that you get to see in a lot of romances and I know a lot of people don't necessarily want to see that in romances but I thought that K.A. Tucker did a phenomenal job of bringing that to you and it just draws you closer into the characters and the relationship. So I absolutely loved that one. All right getting down to the end of the list here we have Razorblade Tears. That is still a thriller to this day that I cannot stop thinking about. Violence in that book was so incredibly satisfying. I loved it so much. Um, again this is another situation where S.A. Cosby's other books have not hit nearly as hard for me but I think some of these books are just finding me at the right place and the right time but I would never give this book any less than a five stars. Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This is where it all started for me with Abby Jimenez. This is one of the best adult contemporary romances of all time. I thought absolutely everything about it was perfection. Abby Jimenez just does main characters so well. She writes the best male love interests and she always does such an amazing job of incorporating harder hitting elements into the story. I feel like she just knows how to structure a perfect romance but I just truly loved everything for the most part that I have read by her and she is phenomenal. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. So this is a romance that really came out of left field. I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. This is one that I was very much in my feels about when the book ended and so I didn't feel like I could give it any less than a five stars. If I were to read it today would I give it five stars? I don't know but funnily enough I'm actually reading Meet Me at the Lake right now and I feel like once I finish Meet Me at the Lake I will kind of have a better idea of where my sense of Every Summer After like fits in the grand scheme of things. I am comfortable leaving it as a five star for right now. If I were to go back and reread it maybe it would be a 4.5 maybe a four I don't know but just the overall positive feelings that I have about the story makes me want to stick with a five stars. Book Lovers by Emily Henry I know was a 4.5 it wasn't a true five stars but again because Goodreads is stupid and does not allow me to give half star ratings I did round it up because I didn't want to round it down. If I were to go back I'd probably say that it is probably a four stars. Think about Emily Henry books that don't necessarily work for me in the way that I want them to work for me. I do know that I just really appreciated the story in Book Lovers. I appreciated the focus was just as much on the sibling relationship as it was on the romantic relationship but I don't think I emotionally connected to it enough to give it a five or even a 4.5 so this is one I think I would probably downgrade to a four. And actually that's really it y'all because when I go to the next page here The Women is really the only other five star book and I've already talked about that. I read that earlier this year it was one of the easiest five stars that I've ever given and I would absolutely keep it at a five stars. All right everybody that is it. This was just a quick fun video idea that I had when I was scrolling through Goodreads and saw some of the books that I gave five stars. For the most part looking at them I feel like a lot of my feelings 
things still kind of hold up. I am very, very stingy about five stars. It takes a lot for a book to get a five star rating from me. So the fact that I only had about 50 books officially marked as five stars on Goodreads, and some of those I even know were not five stars. They were like 4.5. So even less than 50, that just goes to show how I really take the time to determine how I feel about a book and really whether it determines five stars. So if I say that it's got a five stars, that to me is like top tier. It deserves all the love, all the hype. You should absolutely go and read the stories. Please comment down below and let me know some books that you have rated five stars that looking back upon, you don't think that you would keep that five star rating. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a star emoji or five of them in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.